So we're going to take a look at the different types of graphs and when to use them and how to use them. So copy down as we're going along the notes that tell you about the different types of graphs. We're going to start with line graphs, a fine line graph on your paper. Okay. So let's start with the uses. When do we use a line graph? Well, we use line graphs to show change in data over time. So things that change from day to day or year to year or month to month. Some examples of that might be the temperature for a city or how the population of a city changes over a number of years or how the height of a student changes over years. Most importantly there is, and we're talking a student, so how tall you were maybe when you were five, then six, then seven, then eight, then nine, and so on. A double line graph is basically the same thing, only now what are we going to do? Well, we're going to compare two sets of data that change over time. And we use a key to help identify each line. So let's take a look at this double line graph just for a moment. You'll see that it's the growth in height for Jane and Katie. You can see how in kindergarten how tall Jane was. She's the blue line. And you can see Katie. Katie started a little bit shorter than Jane, but then here in second grade she was catching up, and then in third grade she was taller than her. And then she stays a, 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 a little bit taller than her going on. That's our line graph. The next type of graph we want to look at is bar graph. Please find that on your paper. Bar graph. And when we think of a bar graph, what do we know? Well, we know that's used when we can compare data that fall into categories. So like, I have, you know, blue, red, green, and orange stuffed animals. So I might make those into different categories. Or I have striped, plaid, solid colored shirts. I could put those into categories. Looking at some examples, when would I maybe do this? Types of cars, favorite sports, favorite candy bars. Kind of, you know, a big one here is like favorite of anything, right? We could do those on a bar graph when we're talking about favorites of things. Then when we think about a double bar graph, well, what's a double bar graph? It's the same thing, only now when we think about a double bar graph, it's going to compare two sets of data that are similar. They need to have the same categories. So here are the groups, group one, two, three, four, and five. And then what we're looking at is what did they predict about the colors of the M&Ms that they would have? And what did they actually count? terms of the number of M&Ms that they had. So it's two sets of similar data. So group one had a prediction and an actual, group two had a, a prediction and an actual, group three had a prediction and an actual, and so on. Double bar graph. The next graph that we're going to take a look at is line plot. Please find line plot on your sheet. So when do we use line plot? What are we using line plot for? So the use of it is, very importantly, it's a small amount of data. Okay, if you have too much data, it's going to be hard to put that onto a line plot. A small or short range of data. Remember, we don't want our line going on forever. And we also want to be able to determine the frequency of a data value. So we want to be able to see everything that's there gives you the visual representation of the frequency. What are some examples? Well, all the scores on a test, assuming that everyone is about the same. The temperature for every day during the month of January. Not showing what it changes, but I want to know how many days were there that it was 20 degrees, 21, 22, 23. Again, only if the range of temperatures is not that long. How about the ages of children at a birthday party for a six-year-old? Do you expect, you know, a lot of 18-year-olds at that party? No. You're going to expect, you know, four, five, six, maybe seven. So you would have a line plot for that, right? So you'd have the four-year-olds, the five-year-olds, the six-year-olds, and the seven-year-olds. And of course, we're going to put arrows on our, on our line and so on, right? Okay. That's line plots. 
our next one stem and leaf plot so find stem and leaf plot on your sheet so we can talk about the stem and leaf plot when do we use that well the stem and leaf plot is similar to the line plot it's not doesn't look the same but it's similar in that we use it when we want to see all the data but now when we have more data so we might have a lot of data and we want to see where it all falls and it fits into groups so we're also going to have a larger range so that's important to remember that we have this larger range. Okay, we can do a stem and leaf plot when we do have, you know, temperatures in January. And some days it was 70 degrees and some days it was only 20 degrees. So what are some examples? Okay, the height in centimeters of students in a class. Okay, so if we were to do centimeters, those are pretty small. There's going to be a pretty big number of, a pretty big range there. Cars with one passenger that went through a toll booth each day. So maybe all the blue. So all of those cars that had just one passenger going through it. So we would keep track of that. That's our stem and leaf plot. Our last one that we're going to take a look at is histogram. At this point, you just need to turn your paper over so that you can add histogram. And we can talk about when do we use histogram and how do we use it and so on. What are the uses of histogram? It is used when we have a lot of continuous data. That means it goes in order from, you know, let's say 14 all the way up to 72. And it needs to be able to divide it into intervals. Now we're not doing groups or categories. That's not what we're doing with histograms. We're doing intervals. So now let's take a look at what are some examples, not of Step and leaf plot. What are some examples of our histogram? Let me just quickly fix that. So, what are some examples of a histogram? When do we see those? Well, the weight range of students in elementary school. So we might want to know how many kids are between 20 and 30 pounds, how many are between 30 and 40, 40 and 50, 50 and 60, 60 and 70, and so on. Or how about the amount of time it takes to clean, complete your homework at night? So maybe some kids are able to do it in you know, 10 to 19 minutes, 20 to 29 minutes, 30 to 39 minutes, 40 to 49 minutes. Or how about the range of test scores or quiz scores for fifth grade in math? So maybe how many kids were in the 60s, 60 to 69? How many were in the 70s, 70 to 79? How many were in the 80s, 80 to 89? How many were in the 90s, 90 to 99? So when I'm looking at examples of histograms, they're able to go in order.